This program is brought to you by PersonalLifeMedia.com. Living Dialogues is sponsored by Audible. Bestsellers in philosophy, spirituality, and self-help. Download your free audiobook from over 40,000 titles. Sign up for your risk-free trial at audiblepodcast.com slash living. Join today. Cancel any time in the first two weeks and keep your free book as your gift. You're going to love being an Audible listener. I'm Deepak Chopra. It's my great privilege always to be interviewed by Duncan Campbell. Duncan's program, Living Dialogues, is a real trendsetter for the kind of media programming we need in the future. It is uniquely transformative and deep. Duncan's conversations are more than interviews. They always bring out the best in both him and the person he's interviewing. From time immemorial, beginning with indigenous councils and ancient wisdom traditions, through the work of Western visionaries such as Plato, Galileo, and quantum physicist David Bohm, mutually participatory dialogue has been seen as the key to evolving and transforming consciousness, evoking a flow of meaning, a dia flow of logos meaning, beyond what any one individual can bring through alone. So join us now. As together with you, the active deep listener, we evoke and engage in living dialogues. Welcome to Living Dialogues. I'm your host, Duncan Campbell, and with me for this particular dialogue, I'm delighted to have as my guest Deepak Chopra, MD, acknowledged as one of the world's greatest leaders in the field of mind body medicine. He continues to transform our understanding of the meaning of health. Through his creation of the Chopra Center for Well-Being in California in 1995, Deepak established a formal vehicle for the expansion of his healing approach using the integration of the best of Western medicine with natural healing traditions. He is the author of more than 35 books, and more than 20 million copies of his books have been sold worldwide. His bestsellers, known to many of you over the last number of years, include How to Know God, the Soul's Journey into the Mystery of Mysteries, Perfect Health, Ageless Body, Timeless Mind, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, The Return of Merlin, and The Path to Love. Always on the cutting edge, Deepak has embarked on new projects that will change the way spirituality and technology converge, recently partnering with the Wild Divine Project, creators of transformational multimedia product, to develop a trilogy of computer games focused on enhancing mind and body wellness. His The Book of Secrets discusses how to unlock the hidden dimensions of your life. So Deepak, having done dialogues together before, it's a real treat to have you back. Thank you. It's always good to be back on your show. Let's tell the audience right off the bat, since many of them are already familiar with your prior work, what would you say is the distinguishing feature of the Book of Secrets, which many have said, although comparisons are odious, as Shakespeare says, mm -hmm. uh, really summarizes in a really innovative new way much of what you've done before? Well, let me give you a little history. I mean, I, about three and a half years ago, my father passed away, and I'd gone to India to uh, do his cremation. So as I was lighting the fire of cremation, I saw a few kids about 100 yards away. They were flying their kite using the draft of my cremation fire. And, and 200 yards in another direction, there was a wedding band. India is an interesting country where you can have the intimate experience of grief, joy, sorrow, celebration, and playfulness all at the same time. Beautiful image, Deepak. The next day I went to throw the ashes in the Ganges and a family priest showed up and, you know, he sh brought a register with him and uh, in that register was an entry by my father when he had brought the ashes of his father to the same place. Another entry by my grandfather when he had brought the ashes of his parents to the place and so on. And I asked this priest, how far can you go back? And he said, to before Christ to the year 323 B.C. when Alexander the Great came to this country. as With his armies from Macedonia, we started this tradition of keeping a track of lineages. 
and we have yours here going back 2,000 years. And he said, sit down. You know, the fragrance of your ancestors' souls is here, even though every generation comes by like a passing breeze. Write a note to your children when they bring your ashes here and your grandchildren when they bring the ashes of your children. And so, you know, I walked out of there with a completely different perspective and things that I had been exploring all my life, like, you know, where is the soul? What happens after death? Why is there suffering? What is the nature of evil? These things began to kind of want to express themselves. And um, this book, um, I must have prepared for it over a lifetime, but when it started to download itself, it happened very effortlessly and spontaneously. That's such a compelling and beautiful story. As someone who has been to India myself for 16 months out of the last five years, mm. I just can see that image. Varanasi uh, is emblazoned in my yeah. mind with the beautiful image of the updraft from yeah. your father's ashes of taking the kites of the new generation right. and letting them soar into the sky. And you know, Deepak, it gives a whole beautiful subtext and background to your dedication to this book, which, right. uh, with your permission, I'll quote. Yes. And you say, to my father, Krishan Lal Chopra, your graceful life and your graceful death inspired and finally unlocked the hidden dimensions of my life. And it's as if there was a conscious blessing, a final one, bestowed on you by your father at the very moment of the cremation when all of that wondrous orchestration happened at once with his cremation, the kites of the youth flying, uh, the wedding celebration happening. And then I've also, like you, uh, had that same experience uh, when I went to Gangotri, uh, mm -hmm. uh, way up in the mountains, uh, one of the mm -hmm. most beautiful places I've ever been where mm -hmm. the Ganga comes out of, yes. the, of the mountain and where they have recorded the priests there yes. uh, for generations and generations and generations, the uh, history of a given family that I happen to an Indian family that I happen to have gone there with it. Right. So you have the sense of your whole being, you know, extending backwards through literally millennia. So the notion that we've all been, as you point out, in our cells uh, at one time a cloud, a mountain. Yeah, a you breeze. actually literally feel like you're yeah. part of this whole web of creation. Mm -hmm. It was Gangotri where we went also, you know. Well, tell us a little bit about your experience at Gangotri because it's such an exquisite place. Well, it's, it's the birth of the Ganges where, uh, you know, the Ganges takes birth on planet Earth and Ganges is a goddess and uh, symbolically represents purity. And then from, of course, there it washes into the, itself into the plains of India. But there's a lot of history there and there's a lot of spirituality there, and you know, Gangotri is a little north, but you go through Rishikesh and Haridwar, Haridwar. Uh, the word Haridwar literally means the doorway to God, mm -hmm. so it's very special, and um, and uh, it brings back some kind of remembrance of um, the intimacy with a very ancient part of yourself that's been, in a sense, um, living through eons of time through many 